Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. We got another beautiful video for you. It's gonna be a lot of reading in this, so I hope that it don't be that long, but gonna be a lot of reading in this. And that's why I need your utmost attention because I wanna show you something. It's gonna deal with what the lesson is. The promise of the elect peoples of color. The promise of the elect peoples of color. That's you in the audience. And now we gotta remember, we got give us an interest in the Hebrews as well so as the Gentiles or the chosen as well so as the Gentiles. So you're eccentric, don't think we live in your eye. You involved in you in this too long if you following the message and the messenger. You involved in this too. Okay. But this was entitled The Promise of the Elect Peoples of Color 2024-2042. We're gonna take this from Isaiah 41 1. But now, thus saith the Lord, thought created, created thee, O Jacob, and, and the and thee thought formed thee, O Israel. Feel not. Now we know how the story goes. Jacob's name was Jacob before it was changed to Israel. But Jacob wanted to be blessed by the Lord, God thought. And so he would not let him go. This is the story where they said the angel wrestled with Jacob. He would not let him go until he would, he would bless him. And God made him both have power with God and with man. Made a prince have power with God and with man. And we know that Israel is Lewis. So what we know is that is talking about this atmosphere we're in right now. God wants his blessings to be on his bloodline so he could be able to tell God's elect people what they need to know and what they should be doing. And that's very important. You are so important to God that God created a messenger. He created him in order to bring you the message for this particular time of human history. We have told you that that Bible from Genesis to Revelation is about the United States of America. King James had the alchemists to write this Bible, those initiates, and in, in six, uh, 1611, that book was sent over here to America for the Americans because they already knew that this is the land, the promised land. They already knew that the Hebrews was in this land, what we call the Native American or the Indian America. They was already in this land in a certain area. And you got to know that. This land go all the way back because you'll know that in the stir of thought, he took the Omax with him over to Egypt and developed Egypt. So this, this land go all the way back to you, black folks. And they was Hebrews. They tell you the Omax, but they never tell you what faith they were, what religion they were, what they was about. They was Hebrews. And they'll show you different things, but you need to know that this is God's land for his chosen people. This is the beginning. This is where it started from. This is where the Fertile Crescent is. This is where the Garden of Eden is in this area. But it's in the Bermuda Triangle, so you cannot see it. Even in Florida, if you go and look at the advertisement of Florida, real estate advertisement, and other advertisement, tourist advertisement, you'll see them talking in the early 1900s, 18, lot of 1800s, 1900s, they call Florida Eden. So it's nothing new there, but you got, but they don't, they don't teach you this in your history books. So you got to know that. Now let's move on. Let's move on with this. Okay. Now it say, uh, oh, oh Israel, feel not. Oh Israel, feel not. For I thought, I thought have redeemed thee. I thought have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. I have called thee by thy name. In Isaiah, in, uh, I have called thee by thy name, Israel. Okay? And we know Israel stands for the name Lewis. L-E-W-I-S. You see that in Israel. Lewis 8. And Jerusalem also stands for Louis Ron Armstrong. These are anagrams. And also, if you look in Psalm 89, 13 through 20, you look in Psalm 89, you will see the word Armstrong there. You'll see Armstrong in that. But they got it written small A-R-M, and then they got the little dots in between that, then they got S-T-R-O-N-G. But it's an anagram. It's made for you to know that name. I have called Armstrong, and you're going to see that. So look at it so you can see it. So it's no, no mystery to this. It's just that it's never been taught 
this way using the ox. So, so we look at that from that angle. Okay, Isaiah 43 2. When thou pass through the waters. Now you want to see this because this is going to tell you about our time. When thou pass through the water, you're talking about the judgment, the Passover, and the Exodus. You're going to see that in these uh, verses, okay? Isaiah 43 2. When thou pass through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the river. Now, this is about the judgment. Now, how do you see that? How do you come up with that conclusion that this is about the judgment? If you go in the dream or go in the time of King Nebuchadnezzar, not King Nebuchadnezzar, go in the time of the Pharaoh and Joseph time, you'll find out that Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream because he had a dream about the kin, the cow, and about the corn. And it rotated, okay? And, and he, in that that uh, water in that river was in that in that dream, and you'll see that, and it's very important to know that. Now, so we see the judgment. And the judgment was about 21 years. Good, bad, grief, or bad. Deal with economy. Good, bad, grief, or bad. Deal with natural disaster, which deal with the corn natural disaster. Okay, and you'll see that, and you'll see that in uh, other videos, and also, uh, so the Corinthians show it, show it to you on the screen also. Now. When you look at this, then it say, they shall not overflow thee. They shall not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire. Now, you got the judgment, and then you're talking about the Passover. Walking through the fire. So what he say after and Joseph, after the thing about Joseph interpreting that dream, the other part of that dream was that blast with the east wind. That's the fire, that's the destruction, the war. Blast with the east wind. And you have to see it. Seven years of seven years of blast with the east wind. You're going to see that when you read that. They're going to say seven years. They left the Y off. So you put the Y there. It'll be seven years. Blast with the east wind. You're going to see that to know that. Now that's the Passover. Okay? Then they're going to talk about the other part. Let's deal with the other part after the Passover. Neither shall the flame kindle. Neither shall flame. But I'm going to go back. I don't want to go back for you. I want you to see this, sir. And they shall not, shall not overflow them. Okay? It's talking about that first part, the judgment. Then say, when thy walk through the fire, thy shall not be burnt. Okay? Now this is the seven years that they talk about. These are the seven years which is the Passover. This is the time where they talk about blast with the east wind. And also in Jonah, they call, call it the vehement east wind. So these things are in scripture, which they're saying in the book of Isaiah. And once you got an initiate, uh, uh, the initiates have written it, and this initiate that God has blessed you with have been able to interpret it so you can see what it is. That's what they do in Hebrew typology. That's what a prophet do. What a prophet do is that the previous prophet, uh, he'll write things down for that future prophet to be able to interpret it so you'll know exactly what it's saying. And that's what's happening right now. That's what Hebrew typology is all about. Okay, and you can read that. Look up the word read. It's called Hebrewic typology. Look it up and you'll see for yourself what it's saying. Let's go a little further on this. Okay, after the Passover, it say, Neither shall the flame, flame kindle. Neither shall the flame kindle. Now that's the Exodus. Unto thee, neither shall the flame kindle unto thee. So after the war time, after the destruction time, then the afterbirth. It's like for instance, if you set a big bonfire, you have a big bonfire. You're gonna see the fire, and then when the fire go out, you're gonna see the kindling of the wood. Now you know if you're a big fire, you can't just go up on the fire because you get burnt. But then when it lay out, when it gone down, everything done burnt down, and you see the kindling. You got to still be careful. You can't just go walking without shoes on. You may have heavy boots on. You probably walk around and cross it. But if you, you you don't have, you know, proper shoes on, you don't fool with the ash walking because some ash could be hot. So what it's telling you at the time of the exodus, you got to, you, you don't have to be worried about as when the war time comes, but after it, you just be careful and make your move because God is moving you into the promised land. He's moving you into the environment where you're going to be safe. So after 2042, you're going to really be safe because you're going to have your land and you're going to have what they call a celebration. 
at that time that, that you're going to know without shouting shout out this God that led you all the way through this from 2000 all the way to uh, 2042 and you're going to see that now let's go on with this here and what you're going to see and this is where this is a, a chart that showed that it showed the judgment from 2000 to 2020 and you'll see that chart that she showed you and then you got the Passover from 2021 to 2027 then you got the exodus from 2028 to 2042 and in this time the exodus see we convincing people are talking to individuals to come here now before all this um, Passover thing jump off but if y'all don't get here by the Passover you ain't we don't have to worry about it. definitely you'll be coming here during the exodus because all hell will be broken loose in different areas of the United States and you need to be in the safe area. God wants you to always be in the safe area. He's saying on here that he's going to protect you. Huh? He's going to be there for you. He ain't going to let these things happen. And nothing happened to you. And the judgment, the last thing in the judgment was a COVID. And a lot of our people survive all that stuff. We didn't worry about that. We did what we were supposed to do. And, and we knew about the other events that was happening before that. Because the ministry was telling you events that happened before they happened. Now we tell you of the twenty of the seven years of uh, 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 blast with the east wind, and we know we done told you about the warfare and uh, the preparation is going the same way the other ones, good, bad, recent bad, good, bad, recent bad, good. And we done told you about the beginning of this judgment, how it pan not mean the past, so how it pan out, our people being over there, the senators over there in Ukraine, and then later Putin uh uh, took his troops in Ukraine and then later you had uh, the next in 23 you had Putin still in Ukraine you had events happening with the Brit nation and stuff like that and you had them blowing up the uh, pipeline and all the other things you had uh, China and Taiwan starting their conflict back and forth you had the United States shipping stuff to Taiwan thing like that and before it was all over you had uh, that year was over you had Hamas and uh, and you had a march in Israel uh, uh, over there with conflicts. So you see that it went from good, bad to good to bad. And, and you have to see that. Now this year here is a good year. 24 is a good year, but it's still a preparation year like 21 was. It's a preparation year. But 20, because it's also election year. So 25 is the bad year. 26 is a grief for the bad year, dealing with warfare over here. And you got to see that. And this is the thing that this Bible is showing you. And it's showing you over and over again. I show you this same event, the same stuff in many other areas of scripture. But you can read it, you won't know what it is unless you have the arts to put it together to know what they say. Because they're going to say the same thing in many parts of the scripture. That way God wants you to get it so you can be safe. He's not going to let any harm happen to his elect peoples of color. He's not going to let these things happen to you. You're going to have ability to walk in safety, but you have to listen to the prophet of God. When God gives you a messenger, you have to listen to that mes message. And that's what Cross Rock is here for. To give you the message of God at this particular time of human history. He has said, the spirit of truth shall come. And he should tell you things to come. That's what this is. The Messiah and the Prince. That Lewis person. That's what I'm here for. To tell you things before it happens. That way you can be in safety. Let's move on. I'm going to. Uh, let's, let's do it. Isaiah 43. 3. Isaiah 43. 3. For I am the Lord thy God. Okay. And you know that the word God. The Greek word is God, but the word in Egyptian, the Egyptian word is neta. So when he said, I am God, that means the God, the thought is the God in which God, man, which God himself, the source, sent to us to be what he is to be. And he's going to tell you what he is to be. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, the Holy One of your messenger, okay? Thy Savior. I have me. I give Egypt for a ransom. Now, thought is telling you he is the one going to make sure you have, have this, this land in America. He is the one that's setting all this up. He is the one that's going to cause the conflict between the nations, etc. All this is for your benefit. So when you see these things happening, 
in different parts of the world and happen like that, thought is permitting it to happen so that America could wake up. Trump said something the other day and said that about you being the chosen peoples and about the 144,000 of you and how at, at the time of the solo clip, not solo clip, at the time of the sun thing, the uh, so, uh, something dealing with the sun, that you're going to grab and get your energy because you are gods that came to the planet in here in America. But I guess we'll have it and let you hear it and go from there. But you got to know that the power structure know who you are. It ain't just me on the air hollering who you are. The power structure know who you are. Many people talk about you coming from America, but they don't talk about who you are. I'm telling you who you are. You the elect of God. You've been on this land, your ancestors have been on this land for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Okay? No, they're not telling you that. They're trying to give you the narrative of you from Africa. And I'm not against the African people, but you from here. My daddy was Cherokee and my mama was Blackfoot. I ain't got nothing to do with Africa other than visiting and know that Africans came over to America and traded before the Europeans even came here. So we have a connection with Africa, but we are the chosen peoples of God. We are gods on this continent. We just got to come to the fold, come back to ourselves and know ourselves and unify ourselves with unity and integrity. And we need to do that. Let's move on. Now we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about our peoples, okay? We're going to talk about our people, okay? Elvin Janeiro, Marwin Creek, Steve Thomas Sr., Marcella Gordon, Mar Marcel Gordon, Le Leon James, Jason Milligan, Robert Cromwell, and George Cromwell, Amelia St. Clair, Jamie Stopter, Steve J. Coleman, the Neophytes Corporation, and also Miss Shirley Oliver, Mother Shirley Oliver. Okay, these are individuals and there's more of them as you know and we'll give you different names at different times. Hello everyone. I'm going to break in here right now to just say welcome. Thank you for tuning in to Louis Armstrong Ministry. For those of you who may be new, if you've not subscribed or you're not have liked the videos in the past, if you find this helpful, please subscribe and like the videos. We want to make sure that this word gets out in 2022, 2024, excuse me, and we want to make sure that the people who come into the contact with the ministry, they know that this ministry is about self-improvement through the knowledge and teaching that comes through the ministry. And that we as individuals, we have to be able to raise up and do what the Lord is, would have us to do. Now, the people that you have been introduced on the board, and myself included, we're here to support and make sure that the messenger gets the message out because this is so critical at this time in where we are in this dispensation of time to use the church phrase, where we are. And we need to be able to uh, come into the knowledge, exercise the knowledge, and do the things that the Lord would have us to do and protect our family because this next 2025 and 2026 is going to be very challenging for those who are not connected with the knowledge because the surprises that may come, uh, you may be faint of heart, but those of us that follow the ministry and that are part of it and want to do things with the ministry, we know there's nothing to fear. So as sons of God, we seek the knowledge that will bring us into the into the the um, that will bring us into the existence in that spiritual state that we can be uh, more fulfilling for uh, what we're called here to do. So we're called to do things, and this ministry will give us a chance to do that. So the people. On this board they have committed over time and they have been here for this ministry for Minister Armstrong for Cross Rock to make sure that things keep moving 
And I made a special trip to come to just say, hey, hello, I'm here. You see my name on the board. Please, please get your name on the board because when you know who the man of God is and if you're sitting back in your heart and you're saying, this man, he knows something that I don't know and he's doing things that I've never seen. Well, that is important that you step up and come and do the things you need to do from the knowledge that you receive. So it is a, a pleasure to know Minister Armstrong and, and Minister Corinthia. And it's just a wonderful thing with the group that we have. We have all of these wonderful people, wonderful people who have committed themselves. And I ask you, get your name on the board, not just for show, but you know, you want to be in the book. You want to be accounted. You don't want to be out there not knowing what you're doing afraid because the Lord didn't give us a spirit of fear. So with this ministry, you learn that fear is not an option because we know what's going to happen. We know what the ministry teaches us about the potential for a civil war, the potential for the world war. And that, you know, if the Lord doesn't intervene, those things will definitely happen. So what we need to do is make sure that as children of Israel, part of Cross Rock, that we're not afraid. We're not afraid. We are not to fear. So please, like, subscribe, tune in every Sunday. We have a fresh message every Sunday. And that message will make your life a lot better and easier to move through this trying time that we're going through. So I'm Stephen Coleman. You see my name on the board. I am a fan and a contributing member of Cross Rock, of Lewis Armstrong Ministry. So please uh, come to the channel, subscribe, like, and get your name on the board so that we can get to know you. We just had a wonderful event. We had a wonderful event. And the people's names, most of them on the board, were able to attend. So we're going to have more events and more time. So please, if you are learning and you're liking what you are finding out and you do your due diligence and you study, then you are in the right place. Because this will keep us out of trouble. This will get us on the narrow path and that we will be protected. So again, we have the promised land and we need to be, if you're not here, preparing to get here because by the end of this year and early into next year, things may not be the same as we know them. So please, let's protect our families. Let's protect all the things that the Lord would have us to do and be the people that he would have us to be. So again, Thank you for listening. Okay, now, fear not, fear not. This is what you're going to see in Isaiah 43 1. I read it over here. It got fear not. It's Isaiah 43 1. You'll see it say, Israel, fear not. And Israel is saying to you, fear not, fear not. Okay? Isaiah 43 11. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Now this is what thought saying because what they did, see thought is Machazade. Machazade is the one that Abraham paid his tithes and offering to. Machazade is known as the most high priest. Uh, he's the king and priest of the most high God. That's what he is. King and priest of the most high God. Later on they tried to make Jesus the messenger and they created this Jesus uh, 2,000 years ago and tried to make him be thought of Machazade. And you have to understand this. And it started way back at the time of Egypt when uh, Alexander the Great, them and Ptolemy, Ptolemy the first, when they conquered Egypt, what they did, Ptolemy made a god. He took uh, Osiris and Apus and he created Serapis, Christus. Okay? And this is where it first started. Then later, 
they had Mitra. Then later they had Yahshua. And then later they had the, the kings, uh, the Louis. And then later it went back to, uh, to Jesus the Christ. Okay? And you got to remember, like Putin had in the beginning, the Orthodox and the, and the Catholics, they had uh, a black Jesus in the beginning. And then later they turned him white in America. And then later Putin will turn and put the black back in it, or, or brought up the black Jesus picture back in it. But no matter if they put a black Jesus or white Jesus or any of that, none of that existed. None of the truth of that didn't exist. What they was doing, they was emulating, they was emulating uh, the mother of Horus, uh, uh, Isis, and Horus. And if you see the two pictures that Sister Corinthia put them together, you can see the pictures of, of a Horus and Isis, which Horus is known as the messenger, and, and, and Sarah and Jesus. That, and the Horus picture and is older, much older, thousands of years older than the Mary and Jesus picture. And you got to see that. All they're doing is emulating Egypt and what their ideology is about and what they, their uh, spirituality is about. And you have to see that and move forward with that. Now, Isaiah 43, 11, I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Isaiah 43, 12, therefore ye are my witness, said the Lord thought, I am God. And that means he's a nether. He's a chief nether. He's known as the nether of the nether, the gods of the gods. He's uh, known for the writings, uh, uh, and everything. He's known for magic. He's known for healing. You know, he's known. They, it, he's known as the god of the gods, the nether of the nether. That means, and some say he is the throat of God. He is the lip of God. That means God have used him. God. He's more. What you see him as, uh, elderly or older brother. Cause we all are gods. So you see him as an older brother. He's the one that God has put in charge of bringing you to Gnosis. In other words, bringing you to God. And that's what he's used for. To bring you to God. To teach you the truth. And get the dark world of the, of the dark age and darkness away from you. So you could come into the light. So he's your, your older, elder brother. And you see him like that. But it, we see him in the scripture known as God. A God. Okay. Under the source. And you see a lot of times they use the small G in there when they're talking about him, G-O-D, and not the G uh, large G-O-D. And sometimes you will see that. So you'll know what's going on. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up and I got this artwork here, the numbering of the stars, is that you need to know what time it is. You need to know what have happened, the tribulation, which is the 400 years. You need to understand the tribulation. 400 years, because he said to Abraham, he said that thy seed shall be, a, shall be a stranger in the land, thought it's not there, and they shall be, be misused and abused for 400 years, but that nation will not judge. And from 16, and this book was sent to America, so we count from August the 1st, 1619, to October the 3rd of 2013. Why we use that? Because you're talking about 360 days a year, not 365.25. And you have to know that we're dealing with the arts. So, because the reason you use that like that, because there's another prophecy in uh, Matthews where they have under Jesus about the tribulation and then the blood moons the, and, and the solar eclipse. So, you know that after October the 3rd of 2013, that next year, you had the blood moons come. They talked a lot about the blood moons on the on the religious channel many years ago about the blood moon, but they couldn't really define to you what it was about. It's a fulfillment of scripture. And if you look in, in Matthews, Matthews 24, around 29, you can see what I'm talking about, how they tell you about the blood moon coming. And then they tell you that the Son of Man will come on the scene. That's the Messiah the Prince. And the Messiah Prince was supposed to come at 2016. The blood moon and solar eclipse was coming 2014, 2015. And the and the uh, uh, and the tribulation was to end 
in 2013, October 3rd, 2013. So all these calculations, all this stuff go together once you understand the art. You'll see how it works. Okay, now let's go on from there. Okay, now what you're seeing in here, we're not going to do with what we're dealing with with the 400 years and the points on the 400 years when it deals with uh, or the tribulation. We're going to deal with the jubilees here. We want you to see the jubilees and how God worked with people of color. You see the Jewish jubilee. The word Jewish stand is the word Lewis. If you take the word Jew, the word Jew, L E W, before it was L E W, it was L E, before it was J E W, it was L E W. Jewish and Lewis is the same thing. Uh, Lewis is a subname for that, and we're looking at the Jubilees, so you understand that. Look this up for yourself and know that when I tell you L-E-W was before J-E-W, when you ask the question by saying was L-E-W uh, uh, before J-E-W, and they'll, they'll show it to you. Okay, it'll show it to you. And the sub name for Jew is Lewis, and they'll show that to you. But you got to ask it a certain way to get an answer. Okay, else they're going to give you the same narrative that they've been giving everybody else in the past. So when you ask the question a certain way, you will get the right answer. Okay, now, in the Jewish Jubilee, we're going to talk about our time in America, what was happening in the Jubilee. In the Jubilee, when we first, when we go into that, we're going to go with Richard Allen. And from 18, from 1817 to 18. Uh, 18. Now we know that the AME Church uh, was established in 1816, but Bishop Richard Allen was a chosen uh, 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 a black person that was to come at a Jubilee time. There are black leaders always come, important leaders always come on the Jubilee. I want you to hear this. There are always an important leader, black leader, always come on a jubilee, and he's the most important leader at that time, in that particular jubilee. He's at that time. He's going to shine at that time of that jubilee, okay, when it comes to the black leadership, because we are Hebrews, okay? Now, but... Understand one thing about this. This is the dark age at the same time. Lead from, from 18, 1817 to 2017. It's, it's still part of the dark age. So you got to know that the people could easily be manipulated. And that's why I want to show you how our leadership, although they came on the scene, they fulfilled scripture, how it was manipulated. And we're going to see that now. How, how, why would you say in 18, 18, 18, 17 we had a manipulation? Because at the same time, in 1816, when, the, uh, uh, when, uh, the, the, when you had the African Methodist, Episcopal Methodist Church came on the scene, the AME Church came on the scene, the migrational movement came at the same time. So the migrational movement was to, to get you back to uh, Parsi, before the migration movement built the steam up, you had Britain wanting to ship you out of here to uh, Liberia. So the, li uh, so the migration movement wanted to do the same thing, ship you out to Africa because you had choice land. You own your land. You control that land. And they wanted you off that land. So it was not. You got to remember, in 1816, America did not, listen to me, American government did not rule all from sea to sea. It ruled North, New England area, and you see the map, you see it, the New England area all the way down to Georgia. They didn't even own Florida. They didn't run Florida. And they was on that East Coast, straight down that East Coast. And you got to understand that because this was before the Trail of Tears. Now, what you got in this is that Richard Allen went along with calling that church organization the African Methodist Church. Now, it wasn't that Africans was here, but that's what the Eurocentric wanted. So they called it the African Methodist Church. You go in the history book, it's very difficult for you to find out why they gave it that particular name. But if you tie it in with the migrational movement and how the Eurocentric knew the arts and knew the craft in order to work 
in a certain way, then they knew exactly what they were doing. They know who Richard Allen was. He was a light. He was a light among the Hebrews, and they know who you are. So they utilize him because, see, lights rise up. You can't stop lights from rising. And they know you're going to rise up, so what they're going to do? They know the time, and they're going to control you. And this is what was going on. It wasn't only him, it was many of them. What happened after then? And the next Jubilee was uh, in 1867. It was after the Civil War to 1868. Uh, now, who do you have on the scene? You had Frederick Douglass. Now, you got to understand that these individuals like Richard Allen, Frederick Douglass, and some of the others, not Marcus Garvey, but you had these these, some of the individuals' fathers was white, okay? Now, do that make a big difference? Yes, it make a big difference when white folks, they, they prefer taking the light skin black and put him in the house and put the dog black in the field. So it's the same way in leadership position. It's the same way, especially when this young man, have a, he's a light in his environment. So you got to see that. I don't mean to get into that, but I have to tell the truth. I need you to see what's going on, because some of you know that's the way it is. Okay, some of you already know that's the way it is for certain things. Okay, but you need to see that, okay? And also, in understanding the arts, you got to understand the bloodline and why one could be more, Marcus Garvey could be more affected than Richard Allen, okay? Because Marcus Garvey, mother and father, was melanated individuals. And Marcus Garvey, in all that time between Richard Allen and Dr. King time, Marcus Garvey was the most well-known person and the one that had did more work. But Marcus Garvey was deceived with it just like the rest of them because they wanted to use that, use them. They knew they was building things, but they wanted to use that. But I don't want to skip over Frederick Douglass right now because Frederick Douglass, his father, was white as well, so they called him, he escaped from slavery. I don't care if slave slavery. No, he still had a white father, okay? And they used that. He was the one, the first one they know of blacks that was mingling with the president, Lincoln, in the White House, okay? So you got to see that. And also, in between uh, Richard Allen and Frederick Douglass, a lot of land was taken from black folks because they was about the land grab, grabbing the land from the black folks. That's why they, the first, uh, gold rush were found in the Indian Territory or the Native Territory or the People's of Color Territory of Georgia. Okay? And they found that gold in, uh, in 1823, somewhere in there. And then you had the Trail of Tills in that same area, uh, Georgia uh, 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 and, and South Carolina and stuff like that. You had that same thing happen where they pushed them out. Uh, Andrew Jackson which was a military general at the time then became president. Andrew Jackson pushed all those native people of color out of that land and had them go on the west side of the Mississippi River because that was a land grab. They wanted the land, people. They, the whole purpose of coming over here, taking your land, taking your building, taking your gold, taking your minerals, taking this here, this promised land from you. Okay, and that's what they did, and that's what the Catholic Church sided up through the papal bull, the doctrine of discovery, in order to take your land. Okay, and the letter that uh, the governor of Spain wrote to uh, to his king, he strictly told you in that letter that this was the promised land, and he mentioned Florida in it, and he said that that the peoples here was Hebrews, Canaanites and the Seven, the Canaanites of a lot sea. So you need to know all this stuff to get a, a verbal picture of what's going on through this time period that the affliction of the of tribulation exists, okay? Now, now what you had after, after Frederick Douglass, you had 1917 to 1918, you had Marcus Messiah Garvey Jr., okay? Marcus Messiah Garvey Jr. was born on one of the islands, and his father was black, and his mother was black. But what happened at that time, you have a lot of the lighter ones, or the ones that mixed blacks, that was in, it had some, you know, power going for them, but they didn't have real power until they united, because Marcus Garvey was moving black folks in a tremendous way. 
Marcus Garvey had built a steamship line. Marcus Garvey had shops, stores, everything. He wanted blacks to be an economic force, okay? He also wanted to take them back to Africa, and that's why in Liberia and all the other way, that's why he, he, he could he See, if you try to take black folks out of this nation, you're going to fail, okay? As simple as that. God ain't going to have it. You're not going to do something against the will of God. And that's why nobody been able to take the black man and the black woman out of this continent. That's a mess. Ain't going to happen. Okay? And although, and they was in the dark age, so they didn't know certain truth. But they were trying to do the best they could do. Okay? Some of them even made, uh, uh, tied in with the clans with certain things. And even, uh, 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 even you did it with uh, Martin Messiah, Gar uh, uh, Garvey Jr. Even show where he wanted one of the Klan's members to come there and speak at one of his rallies and stuff. The people wasn't fond of that, but this is how far they was going to trying to be able to get things done for you. But it wasn't God's will the way they were doing it, but them as leaders was trying to do their best. Certain things they didn't know. They was not working the arts, so certain things they didn't know. And in the dark age, you definitely wasn't going to do none of that because the devil was just standing watch for over what he's supposed to be responsible for. And he was not going to let certain things happen. But he wasn't going to let Satan destroy you neither because the devil controlled all of that. And Satan is the one that is part of the dark kingdom. But yet, uh, the devil is a royal, so he's going to make sure that dark age go through properly without the destruction of God's chosen people. And you have to see that. He's not a savior, but he got a, a zone that he have to cover and watch over. And that's what he did, he do. So he have power over the archons and, uh, and the Satanists and all this other stuff, okay? And you need to understand that. So that's why when people talk about the devil, they really don't understand the devil. Like they think they do, because they make the devil Satan and all the rest of the thing when the devil is not. Okay. Now, let's go on with this. Okay. Now, after Marcus Messiah God became Martin Luther King. Now, you had in between those people, all these people, you had leaders come in between them now. You had leaders come in between them. Now, the, uh, 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 Martin Luther King, he realized after the fact, see, he was a boule, and he was trying to work with brothers and, 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 and other ministers and stuff, and with white ministers, and you find a lot of pictures, you'll see Martin Luther King sitting in the White House with uh, President uh, Kennedy and also with Bobby Kennedy. So you'll see this and you'll know that you ain't going to be sitting in there unless you doing some things they want you to do, okay? Because Martin Luther Kingdom in the beginning, their thing was to, to have black folks recognized as somebody, okay? Equal rights, somebody. But no, they wanted, they determined and moved him into that thing and SNCC came in the picture, et cetera, and they said SNCC was infiltrated. Okay, Stokey Carmichael and them, they say they was infiltrated. And so you had them come on the scene and trying to push it to the lunch counter, riding the buses. We already had buses, lunch counter, riding the buses, uh, hotels, taken from your hotel, and et cetera. And they took the economy, they robbed the black economy. Black banks began to fold and all that, and everything wanted, they wanted to go to the white man. Okay, to the Eurocentric man for their business and all this other stuff. And thus they lost employment for their black youth and all this other stuff. And they started realizing they could take all this good stuff on these black folks and let them become labels. Okay, and that's what instead of becoming business owners or maintain yourself as business owners and grow bigger, you became labels. You became labels in their hospitals. You became doctors and nurses and etc. You became labels in their corporation. You became CEO people. You became truck drivers. You became factory workers. So you became a, a, a nation of labels at that time. You're approximately 60 million people in America and the majority of 90, 98% of you are laborers, okay? And you have to get out of that. And remember Elijah Muhammad was talking about blacks become have became labels and labor. We need part of this land for ourselves. 
We don't need to be just labels, labels. We need to run our own nation. And this is what the scripture is saying. We need to run and control our own nation. We don't need somebody else dictating to us what we need to do. This is the whole thing about Genesis and the fall of Adam because Adam was a melanated man from the dust of the earth and then the E woman was the Eurocentric woman who was taken, of the Eurocentric race that was taken from his rib. That's why I say bone my bone, flesh of my flesh. Okay? But she still, they, they although they was Eurocentric or white, okay, eventually, but they still was part of Adam. But God made Adam over the earth. Adam over thing. And what that happened, they done flipped the strip. Now the white man running the world now. And they, the black man is in opposition to the will of God because God put him over everything. And that's why it got to be a transition. That's why you got to have the promise, the promise of the elect of color fulfilled. Because you have to come back to yourself. You got to have unity with integrity. You got to be people that control your own destiny, your own nation your own land, your own economy, your own social environment, your own political environment, and you have to see God from your eyes, from your lens, not from somebody telling you Jesus is your savior. <laughs> okay? Jesus is going to save you. Through the blood of Jesus are you saved. Telling you that big lie. And our people have followed even me when I was a child. I ran behind that nonsense until God came and woke me up. And he opened the Bible up to me so I could see the truthism of the Bible. I could work the rocks of the Bible and know that Melchizedek always been the Savior who is thought. And that God had a messenger coming and that messenger was going to come at a certain time known as the Messiah the Prince. Okay? And you got to see that. And they've been lying to you. The Exodus, they told you Exodus 3,500 years ago, 4,000. It was no Exodus at that time. Although it might have been some, somewhere in human history, it wasn't at that time. And it was the, the Exodus and the uh, uh, Passover and the judgment. All this stuff is about our time. We are the one that went and suffered 400 years in the wilderness, as they called it. Suffer under the Eurocentric banner, under that slavery of that of that servitude being afflicted through through Jim Crowism and everything else. And we got to see that now, because it's time out for the foolishness, black man and black woman. It's time out. God wants you to take your place. You the one supposed to be ruling your destiny. You the one supposed to be ruling your land. You the one supposed to be ruling your financial institutions. You the one supposed to see God eye to eye. You got to see him. Just like Jacob said, you got to see him. Just like Israel said, him, you got to see him. This is what time it is now. Ain't no time for this BS and all this nonsense now. They done whirl you through this mess long enough. You begin to see truthism, live on truthism. Don't go backwards. Don't do like Lot wife. Look back. Look ahead and see what God got for you. Because you're going to know God is going to do something great in your life. And see this. Let's move on now. Let's move on. Okay. Isaiah, and it shall come to pass in thought day, thought the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. That's you. I don't mean to holler, but it's you, my people. He gonna recover the remnant of his people because he know you've been in this land and this was your land and they done came over here through the Catholic Church through the Doctrine of Covenant and took your land from you. Destroyed your people. Destroyed your cities. You had cities more modern than the cities of Europe. And they tell you, oh, the, in, in the Chicago uh, 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 fair in the New York fair, they blew it up talking about they built the cities and stuff like that and all this stuff. And there's evidence of, of the things that you did. You had pyramids from North America, Tennessee, North America, all the way down to Central and South America because you had the technology to do that. But they want to tell you, and through Hollywood and stuff, you was in teepees. Come on, get the heck up out of there. People, you have the knowledge, you have the mind, you have a, a particular mind. Through your mind, through your penal gland, God operates and he brings things 
in there. When thought the move went from, from this land and went over there to organize the Egyptian land or build a pyramid, these people went on an airship. They weren't riding on no darn boat. That's the time, kind of technology was here. Free electricity was here. And you got to see this. And these people, they'll take these temples that was, and they'll tell you, they is your temple. They'll take the Mormon temples up. Oh, well, well, Joseph Smith was given a vision from God that, you, you know, he, are, he and, and they built this uh, thing that the air conditioned dust were already in there. Get the heck up out of here. And you believe it, because they said it. They said it. You got to wake up now, because you've been lied to. You've been lied to, my people, and you can't go for the lie no more. We done moved out of the age of deception into the age of, of, of Pisces, and you got to get rid of the lies. Because so they done lied to you big time. Now, let's move on. Let's move on in this here. Okay? Then they say this uh, Thought the Lord shall set his hand again the second, the second to receive, yeah, to receive, to recover. Recover the remnant of his people which shall which shall be left from Assyria. Now Assyria, if you understand some writing we show you about Jonah, because Nineveh was in, in, in Assyria and stuff like that. Assyria, this is an anagram for America, and you gotta see that. And from Egypt, and America is the old Egypt. This was the Egypt before that Egypt over there was built. So he's telling you about this land. This land. Isaiah 12, 1. And in thought day, in thought day, I shall say, O Lord, I will praise thee. In thought day, I shall say, O Lord, I will praise thee. This is where you lead to. You're going to not be talking about praising on Jesus. You're going to be talking about praising thought, praising the Lord. Machazade. And see that. And you're going to understand that Jesus is a cold name for the messenger that was to come. You're going to see that because you're going to come into the truthism. He said, the arts are the glory of thy strength. The arts are greatly beloved. So you got to know that. And he said to Adam, that's what made Adam fall. He said, Adam, where art thou? He wasn't talking about looking for Adam nowhere. He was talking about your arts, Adam. Nobody could deceive you when you operate in the arts, Adam. Thought have given you the arts, Adam. So you need to use the arts because you are to be the ruler. You was appointed to be the ruler of this nation, or the ruler of this land, not some other race, not the one that came from, from your DNA. Not the reptilians, not the reptilian hybrids, not the archons, but you. And the black man and woman got to wake up to that. Because you are gods. And you got to see who you are and go on with that. Now let's move on with this. Isaiah 12.1. And, and in thought day, thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou was angry. Now you're going to hear this word angry. I want you to follow this up. I'm going to read it, but I want you to follow this up. Although thou was angry with me. Although thou was angry with me. I want you to listen to this carefully. Thy anger is turned away. And thy comfort, thy comforted me. Now God never was angry with me. That's the word they put in there. Because they want you to think that God is an angry God. God is a nothing but love. So ain't no anger in there because God know what you're doing, why you do it. God know when you're gonna do it, what you did before you thought you were gonna do it. So he wasn't angry at you. No more than you won't be angry at your kids sometimes when you know they're trying to do something and they make a stupid mistake. And stuff like that. You won't get angry with them because you know they're children. So how much love do you think God have for you? So they just cause the writer put that in there because you got to know them. this book is a book of spells too. Just cause the spell of it is in there and saying angry, that don't mean necessarily that's what it means. You got to understand this now. You got to understand this. Very, very important. This is why I got down here, read verse 2 and 3. Isaiah 12, 2 to 3. Now why do I have you read that? Because between this part and this part over here, you're going to hear them giving praises to Jehovah. Jehovah. And it was put in there. You see, all the other time it's talking about thought. Then in them two verses, they talk about Jehovah. Now, why would they talk about Jehovah after they say about anger? Anger. Because they want to throw you off. 
And that's why a lot of Jehovah Witness, they don't know the ox and they use the word Jehovah and don't know that Jehovah is not a word that's supposed to even be in there, in this book. Jehovah is not the name of God, the Almighty. Okay? And you got to see that. But you don't know because J wasn't in the alphabets until the uh, 15, four, late 14, 1500s and stuff like that. So you got to understand this stuff because sometimes you say stuff and you read stuff and you read it with the spell, with Pashay it, and don't know that you got to know by Ramus. You got to know by uh, uh, Thrush. And you got to know by the Lives of the Secret. Or Ramus and then the other stuff and the Lives of the Secret. You got to know all this stuff in order to understand the Bible. Now I'm going to go to this last board and see what we got. Isaiah, Isaiah 12, 4. And in thought day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention thought his name is exalted. Isaiah 12 5. Sing unto the Lord for he have done excite, excellent things. This is known in all the earth and all the miracles. See, God's going to bring this and fulfill this where you're going to appreciate thought. You're going to appreciate God using his Savior, thought, majesty, in order to make, give you the freedom or deliverance. And you're going to know that. Isaiah 12, 6. Cry out and shout, thy inhabitants of Zion. And what is Zion? Zion is, a, uh, is an anagram for Lewis. Thy inhabitants of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Israel is known as Louis A. Great is the Holy One of Israel. That's thought. He's the one, my spiritual God. He's the Savior. He's the one I have called the messenger for. He's the one I have called the Messiah, the Prince for. He's the one that have called this into motion. So you'll know. Isaiah 1.1. 1, 1. And there shall come forth a rod, which is a bloodline, out of the stem, the stem, this L-E-W-I-S, stem is represented out of the stem of Lewis, of Jesse. Let me read this. And there shall come forth a rod, which is the bloodline, out of the stem of Jesse. Now, this is Lewis. You see this L, take this cross off the T, L E W, L E W. Take that cross that part off the T, put it there, and take the S, put it there. That's Lewis. This stem represents Lewis, an anagram for Lewis of Jesse. So Lewis of Jesse, so that means if I say this is about Lewis of Jesse, and on that that Lewis, then that 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 that, that name. That Jesse had always been looked at a man name. That Jesse got to have something to do with that Lewis parent. So if I say that, then my father's name was Alvin and my mother's name was Essie. This got to match with, Jesse got to match with that name as being an anagram. As being an anagram. E-S-S-I-E. -S -S -E. You see? E-S-S-E. -S -S -E. You see that right there. How do you get E-S-S-I-E? -S -S this is J turned that way. If you take this J and you bring that down straight and take this part and put it there, you got an I. E S S I E. Telling you about the mother because the bloodline have a lot to do with the mother. And you got to see this. Everything about us is a mutation of a female. And then all cells start off phenetic or start off in a female state until it goes to six weeks and then six weeks it creates something called the Y chromosome and then the Y chromosome actually ends up with the X chromosome and these things are what give birth into the male and this when you start seeing the vagina metamorphosize into a penis so all all embryos so start the woman off female. determines the sex of the of course of course it's called the mitochondria DNA, the mitochondria gene, the mitochondria Eve gene. Without mitochondria, we have no life because the mitochondria is what yields us ATP and energy for we can have vitality to live our everyday life. Everything about the black woman screamed God. Everything about her, but everything about the black man screamed God as well because we come from the black woman. 
all messiahs, all kings, all queens, all great people, all the ancestors that did amazing things, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, the uh, all the uh, John Henry Clark, uh, Yachanan Ben Yosef, all uh, Martin Luther King, didn't they come from a vagina? Absolutely. So so to even build a beautiful kingdom of of kings and of gods and of people that's in uh, professorism, people that teach uh, uh, philosophy, they have to come through that black woman. Period. And then when you start getting to other races, the black woman is the only woman that can birth any other race. Can't no other race birth the black woman. Very true. It have a lot to do with the mother. It's telling you that this person, mother, is Essie. And that's my mother name, Essie Mae Armstrong. See, this Bible got it there. But you got to start opening your eyes and want to see the truth. I can't make you see the truth. That's why he said the arts are the glory of thy strength. I'm bringing the arts. He said to Hagar, thy child will be with art. Who is Hagar? Hagar was the Egyptian. What is the Egyptian world? The original Egyptian. What, what that was? He was a black lady, the melanated lady of this nation. Out of her, out of her is going to come one with the arts. One with the arts. See, my people are original from this land. One with the arts. This is the Egypt that they're talking about. One with the arts. I'm bringing you stuff you've never seen before. Revelation you've never seen or heard before. But you see it, and if you listen to this organization, you see how many of them came to pass. All you got to do is go back into the videos, and you'll see it yourself. I'm not going to lie to you. I always say, check me. Prove me wrong. I don't say it because I want to be arrogant. I say it because thought dwelling into me to tell you to check me, prove me wrong. So when you go check me, you're going to see the truthism that thought has given me to give to you. This is what it's all about. Getting you to see the truth. Because some people just read it and listen to the thing. But when you tell them, check me, prove me wrong. And they go and say, well, I'm going to prove this Negro wrong. And when they go and look at it, they say, wow, damn, this is real. This is true. And that's what it's about. You see the truthism of God. So you can move on and we can have this nation and have our land that we're supposed to have. Let's move it on up. On down. Isaiah 12, 6. Isaiah 12, 6. Cry out and shout, thy inhabitants of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. The Holy One of Israel. Greatest thought. Greatest Melchizedek. You got to see this. Isaiah 11, 1. And there shall come forth a rod, a bloodline out of the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. Isaiah 11, 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And when you see fear of the Lord, it ain't about fear nothing. It's about the year of the Lord. Well, in the year of the Lord, God thought. It's the year of the Lord. And you need to see this. And let's move it on. So, in verse 3 say, And he shall smite the earth, America, with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips. That means he's going to tell you what's going to happen before it happens. You ain't got to go and do, get no, and, and, and war with nobody. God is taking care of this. He's going to pin them against each other. He's going to fix it where all this nonsense is going to be over with. It ain't asking you to take up arm and fight this person or fight that one. Like, uh, uh, like they said, uh, Russia was saying, uh, blacks need to uh, uh, leave and come out of the prison system and go over to Africa, get trained. You know, so they could come and, and be terrorists and marry. Oh, we don't need all that. We don't need none of that. We don't need none of that. God already got this thing set up. What they doing right now? Uh, uh, proxy wars right now with Russia and Ukraine fighting against America. Talk about the UN. UN is all about America, okay? All about America. Over there with uh, Israel and Hamas. All about America. Okay? All about America. See, God already got this thing side up. So we ain't got to worry about nothing. 
Just do what we're supposed to do. Keep our hands clean off all that nonsense. And when that migration time comes, we make that migrational movement. And until that time, we look at what's going to happen. We look at it through the Passover, what's going to happen. And that's what we need to do. And that's what we need to understand. Now, that's the end of this. we like you to make your donations. We still need that 100 K with those 10 peoples each. And please help out. Everybody could get, throw their hands in there. You got a thousand, throw it in. You got five thousand. You got five hundred, throw it in the pot so we can start doing this. Because like we say, we don't have one person brought this hundred K and we do have individuals out there in the audience to help a little to make some of this happen. So we asking you, reach down in your pocket, your purse, your your account, you know, and, and, and help make this happen. Please. Help make this happen so you can take this so we can take this to the next level. Okay? You can make your donation to Louis Armstrong Ministry at 7536 Jana Lane North, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. Or you could go with Cross Rock Incorporated at the same address, 7536 Jana Lane North, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. Or you could go with Cross Rock with Give the Five on your mobile app on the charitable. That's Give the Five mobile app on the charitable with Cross Rock Incorporated. Also, you go with PayPal at Armstrong Lewis J at gmail.com. That's PayPal at Armstrong Lewis J at gmail.com. You can also go with Cash App. Cash App dollar sign SWAU 1954. That's Cash App dollar sign SWAU 1954. Now I'd like to say a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for permitting us to know that we're somebody special to you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for permitting the elect of the elect to come forward. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the good things you do. We thank you that you have made it plain that we know who our true Savior is. We know who is going to deliver us through these troubled times that are to come. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God thought, and we thank the source of Allah for being there. We thank you for understanding that in the word, hallowed be thy name, is Allah. Thank you, Father, for giving us the knowledge how to operate the arts, that what Adam had did and forgotten, we have revived. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen.